Ne, on. Okay, no ladies, so good morning, gentlemen. <laughs> My name is Rivanek and I'm working in OpenGDK team in Red Hat and I'm going to tell you about some secrets in OpenGDK 8. At first, this presentation was organized like a jigsaw as the most important feature in JDK 8. Then I wanted to say something about Lambda, which is second most important change, and then to gather some small features in JDK 8. However, the project Jigsaw was removed from the JDK in the October 2012, so I will move it to the end, only how the time will remain. What is awaiting us? <laughs> One page of history, because Java have already very long history. Then something about the Lambda, about the small features, about the Jigsaw, and for each of them, something that will be the same. So, history of, history of Java. It started in 1992 in uh, Sun Labs as Project Oak, and in 1996 it was firstly released. Two years later, the always crossed plugin was introduced, with it the uh, just-in-time compiler finally, and the uh, GNU class pass as a reaction to the closed source Java was established. 2001, Hotspot and Java Web Start were introduced to following the plugin. 2006, JDK6, following with the Open JDK6, and following with Project Ice Team. In 2009, the acquisition by Oracle and the rising of Project Ice Team Web. In the middle of 2011, was, was released Open JDK7, and the Project Ice Team was started to be merged into the Open JDK itself. And in the middle of 2013, we are expecting Open JDK8. So, well, second page of history, but I need to highlight a few features of the JDK 7, especially its Invoke Dynamic, which is allowing the dynamic languages like JRuby or Scala to be run directly on JVM without the translating to the Java before. And it is done via the magic, which is inlining the custom code through the virtual machine. The second change was the small changes, mostly gathered in the project coin. And uh, it contained the Sphinx in Stretch, autoclosable numeric class, and many, many small enchantments. From the concurrency utilities, there were added fork and join framework, which allows you to split your work, make it parallel, and then gather the results. And um, input output will finally somehow rework to the new file and new file, uh, new file package. Also, the huge improvement was about the taking the care of community. And at the end, the JDK 7 was just a conservative change. And JDK 8 was promised to be a little bit more than conservative change. It was also the community was afraid it will be more revolution than evolution. But when, sorry, but when Jigsaw was moved to the JDK 9, then it will no, be definitely no revolution and just an evolution, as it probably should be. Lambda have remained, small features mostly have remained and some sporadical changes or controversial changes as open sourcing of JavaFX in its 3.0 version or Project Grail are still inside in some state of evolving. OpenGDK 8 had future complete in the end of the February, sorry, January, but it was not actually true because many features were dropped a little bit soon before and all, all, all of them have been rescheduled to the next milestone. The developer pro preview is expecting in the end, of, or it was expected two days ago, but I have not noticed any announcement, so we can expect it in Monday. And finally, this candidate is planned to the May, and in September there should be a general availability. As we have learned from JDK 7, that will be probably true, and if not, then some more features will be dropped. Open JDK 8, the bundles, the build bundles by Oracle are available uh, to be downloaded on this URL. And it will be packed in Fedora 19, of course, from the source code. You can quite easily build it on your own. Just do the Mercurial clone, then get sources, or to clone individual sub-projects, each by, one by one. Then you can execute just plain configure. You do not need to execute out, out again. And here you go. The Java OpenJDK 8 is built for you. But there will be no Lambda and do, no Jigsaw because these projects are still maintained separately and they have their own modified GDK. So finally, Lambda. Lambda, as I told, needs some other project, especially it needs to clone the defender methods and build them separately. 
the new clone again by Mercurial. Mercurial check out the Lambda itself, get sources, and make, and here you go, GDK bundles with Lambda are also available on OpenGDK site, and most uh, major uh, de development and environments are already supporting it. Eclipse in its head, NetBeans 8, and JIDEA 12. What is actually Lambda? I think that most of you have already noted what is Lambda is. Lambda are anonymous functions. It's actually parameterized behavior, which treat behavior as data, and it provides the closure mechanism. As a benefit from it, the developer will get more effective code, less verbosity, and a parallelism which is coming exactly directly from JDK. Lambda, what is it? You can imagine this simple example. Some, some method which is about to send an email to some person who is defined by this predicate. Uh, this is well-known pattern in Java, and it's called the functional interface, and the best example for it is the runnable, which is nothing do, do nothing more than run. Yeah. So, the verbosity of this is well-known, because when you possible some overriding or usage of this method in this method spam possible alcoholics, you need to determine if the, people, if the person is able to drink alcohol, so you need to ask to its age. You need to create a new predicate, implement the new met this method, and to create your predicate. And actually, the only thing you wanted to write was to ask for the age. If you will think about it, it's, this pattern is well known, it's working, it's good readable, everybody is used to it, but if you will dig into it, it a little bit more, you will find uh, problems like generics, like more complicated predicates, you will need the interval of ages, or maybe to ask to the sex of the person or something like that. And if you will try to generalize it, you will get to your own interfaces and to the ge more generics and more generics. So at the end, you will be, be unhappy. So here, where the lambda is coming handy. Again, the spam possible alcoholics. Uh, you can see that all this verbosity, however, can be removed. And at this time, it's actually our first lamb Sorry, first lambda. <sighs> Our first lambda expression, taking just person and asking to its age. So the, all this method written with the lambda expression is nothing more than this. Spam possible alcoholics, it's spam the matching person, where person's age is higher or equal to 18. A little bit more examples of the lambda. Here is the lambda which is taking two integer and returning their summary. Here is the lambda which is taking nothing and returning the meaning of the world. And here is lambda taking the string and returning nothing. Every single this is possible is lambda because the type is guessed during the compile time. Actually, the JDK 8 will have lambdas possible where, where able and where it's good to use them. So this is the example from the real life. This line will be in JDK 8. The lambda, when written and compiled, is still an object and is translated to the functional interface, which type is guessed during the compile time. But during the invocation, it's invoked via the invoke dynamic, so it's never instantiated during the runtime. Lambdas should be stateless because the parallelism on the lambda can be pretty strong, and they can receive the effective final outer local variable as the anonymous inner functions can, but a little bit more, more common way. GDK 8 is going behind the simple language changes and is going to enchant the collections framework by the lambda expressions and adding the parallelism and adding the defender's methods. And it will be a title incorporated to in the GDK 8 itself. So the defender's methods. Defender's methods are default implementation of the interface methods. It's disturbing the poorness of interface a bit but not at all, because they have to be still stateless, and no, no global variables are allowed in the interface. And they can be removed lower in hierarchy by the non-k word, and they can support the supper to choose your implementation in your overriding of the methods. A small example, here is interface iterate version 5 with the two methods. Each of them have a default implementation. The further default implementation is pointing to the static method of the collection framework, and do magic is just printing that it exists. Defender method inheritance is a little bit complicated because Java wanted to avoid the state of C++ where you can inherit from the several ancestors. So yes, you are inheriting from several ancestors here, and you can receive several implementations of the defender method. 
the algorithm which is taking care about this is pretty complicated, but in simple words, the closest best type match implementation is chosen. And of course, you can declare the supper yourself. Two examples. In first, interface F, A has a M implementation of method. Interface B have also its own implementation of method M. And interface C is extending the A. So when class will implement B and C, it will least right forward to the B because it's the closest and best matching implementation. In second example, the only difference is that C is extending A and F also its own default implementation of M. In this case, you will receive a compile time error because it's not clear which one has to be used. So you need to use the separate keyword to define it directly. Enchanting of collections was actually the only reason why the defender methods were added because Oracle or OpenJDK 8 needed to evolve the collections framework and so they needed to add more methods. So the defender methods were added so the backward compatibility was not disturbed. The main reason or the most necessary methods, methods which needed to be added to the collections were the stream interface, the methods which are returning the stream. The stream interface is a little bit complicated and it's providing the methods which are returning the stream so you can chain them. The result of this will be usage of lambda in a chained streams. Uh, so you will get some list called stream on it. So you will receive the stream and then you can filter all persons older than 18. You can get their email addresses and for each of these results with its email address, you can send an email. So this is lambda in a really true usage in collections. Parallelism. As I told, Java, the, the lambdas are the gateway to the parallelization. The parallelization is going from JVM itself and you can get it from the collection by the parallel stream method. Or you can get it directly from the parallel iterable interface and you can control it by the split iterator, which is actually a new iterator but on a parallel way, or by a bit more sophisticated <laughs> implementation of splitable. When you will when you want to run the operations on stream in parallel way, you again get your collection, create a parallel stream on it, and then we are going in the same way with a, with a normal stream. You can control it via the custom implementation of the split iterator, but mostly the default implementation is good enough. And if you do this wrong, you will probably get very bad results. It will be slow, and maybe you will get some unexpected results if you kill the not the status of the lambda. Here is the parallelization, parallelization how it is implemented in OpenJDK because actually it's nothing more than the fork engine framework. And the split iterator is nothing more than better abstract way how to divide the work. And the parallel is nothing more than a simplified way how to access the frame engine framework. And as I told, the anonymous classes are never instantiated and are executed via the invoke dynamic. So this picture is showing it pretty good. From libraries is taking frame engine framework language and compiler is taking about the translation of lambda into the functional interface and the virtual machine is invoking it thanks to invoke dynamic. Enough of lambda, small changes are coming. I will mention the common changes, the Java doc changes, infrastructure changes, changes with language and Java virtual machine itself and at the end a little bit of the networking and cryptography. So local matching, local matching is API which should return you to, to the list of all possible localizations for the user. It should solve something like when you have a person born in Japan, living in France, speaking German and English, it should return to you sorted list of the localists and I, how actually I'm not sure how is it doing it. Date and time API is expected change, it's based on a Yoda time, so it is well tested, well proved. It's providing the immutable classes, class classes, and I think everybody will happily get rid of the old date and time API. Classed implementation improvements. Uh, this is a very old change. It was created when the OpenJDK 8 was cloned from JDK 7, and it's taking care about the, especially about the mapping of the local fonts to the JDK. This was backported also to the JDK 7. The removing of the plain text mapping files that were mapping the system fonts to the JDK's fonts is no longer necessary, but in JDK 7 it's not working properly. In JDK 8 this is working, and also we will receive the new string from bytes and string get bytes methods. 
adopting of Unicode CLD data for internet, internet sorry, no chance to say it. And it is especially it's replacing the, uh, the OpenJDK owns format by the standard one. Unicode 6.2, so the latest one, and base 64 encoding and decoding. This is actually a funny change, because in JDK itself there is five implementation of base 64 encoding and decoding methods. I think everybody of you have already implemented his own, and Apache have their own. And here finally, this will be unified in one public API. Javadoc changes. All the changes together are mostly focused to make uh, Javadoc more configurable and to allow its evolution. You will finally be able to call the Javadoc from the API, not by forking a new process. And we will get also some detecting errors in Javadoc in the compile time. Infrastructure changes. Compact profiles and uh, preparing for modularization are de derived from the project Jigsaw and this is what remains from it. The preparing for modularization is the more important from these changes because it's providing the substitute APIs for some commonly used private stuff which will not be possible with project Jigsaw applied. And some deprecated APIs uh, will be, some APIs will be deprecated because they will be no more available in GDK9. The compact profiles are trying to prepare user to get used that he will not be forced to use the whole runtime jar in one, so you can specify what parts of the runtime jar you can execute. The example is this, that if you have several applications, you do not need Swing, so you will forbid the using of Swing in a runtime. From infrastructure, the greatest change is the using of autoconf base system. It was adapted from the IT project, and it should increase the build speed. It should simplify the build system source code. It should simplify the work for developers. And many, many few changes, uh, good changes. The important is maybe this, because the result of the M4 compilation, that means the generated configure script, is checked into the repository. It's not nice, but it's how OpenGDK infrastructure is working. It wants as few dependencies as possible. Launching of JavaFX application from command line, as we are used to launch Java, Java applications. And ability to build a small virtual machine. It will be possible to build virtual machines more than three megabytes, and it's focusing to the small devices. It will be achieved by the excluding some features in the compile time and by usage of better optimization of the C code. And some drop of performance is expected and possible and probable. Language changes. You will finally be able to add the annotation also to the Java types, uh, which the reason behind is is to make easy pluggable data checkers on top of it. Most of the big frameworks are making it on their own, so now you can go it directly from the JDK itself. More generalized target type checking. Uh, everybody here, I think, knows the need of verbosity when you are still checking for the type and casting it and casting it again. So now the compiler will be a little bit more clever and will get it in a compile time and possibility to access the parameters of name in the runtime. Again, most of the framework is solving this by the, its own parameter. So now you will be able to get it directly from virtual machine. And it is very small change, but it will need the changes in bytecode. The annotations will be allowed to be repeated. JDBC 4.2 and reducing the core library memory usage. It is quite important change because there were find a, uh, not memory leak exactly, but something very close in the object itself. So this will be removed and the object itself will become smaller. So all the memory print of the virtual machine should be smaller now. Changes in virtual machine. Removing of permanent generation. Uh, it's part of the JRocket conversation pr project and JRocket do not have permanent generation. And also hotspot have found it redundant. So there will be no anymore to need to tune this permanent generation. Reducting the need of uh, full garbage collection cycle cycles. Actually, this is one of the changes which was dropped in the middle of the January, and I think it was because the project which is providing the pauseless garbage collector was, was offered to the OpenJDK. Compile control, now you, there will be a an, an possibility to configure both the compile one and compile two in runtime and to gather all the flags in one way and finally document it somewhere and the fairness instructs of the methods. From JVM changes, the limited do privilege uh, can speed up the runtime a lot because now the virtual machine need to check 
the whole the stack if it's not disturbing the do privilege sandbox. So now this will be removed and the virtual machine will be checking just parts of it, but there is possible security impact, especially when the, some of the parts were backported to the JDK 7. Concurrencies of updates in a concurrency framework, especially for and joint pool improvement and additional lock, and lock features. Redacting the class metadata footprint is again quite interesting thing because when JDK 7 was adapted by the Oracle, there was a lot of not so experienced engineers who were touching it. And it really happened that they put the CT3 bytes into the 64 instead to think about it and put it to 32. So this, this small change is trying to gather these changes and to squeeze what squeeze be possible and redacting those other pointers and many, many more changes which were detected by the heap analyze. More changes from virtual machine. Before the bytecode uh, entered the virtual machine, it's verified. And when you are instrumenting your classes in runtime, you sometimes broke this, and you can really get an exception that the bytecode was not verified properly, and when you got this exception, it was mostly misleading. This is, this is a large project, and, uh, and the very fair of the bytecode was actually rewritten from scratch. Reduce the cache containers and on specified field. This is the most challenging project of JVM, and I think we are happy that they made it. Because when Java Virtual Machine was storing something on a stack or to the cache, it was not caring how long it is, it just used it. Now they are able to add some alignment before the variables, which is not saving the space, but it's speeding up a process a lot because you can send the second variable to the second core, so you can run them together if it's possible. Lambda connecting features, block data operation on the streams, as I told, Lambda expression themselves, and integration Lambda into the core libraries of JDK were useful and were possible. Collections enchantment from the third party libraries, unluckily this was dropped in the middle of January. The goal was to enrich the, the, the collection framework by the features which are available, for example, in Google collection framework and something like that, but as I told, dropped. We will miss it. Parallel array sorting do new methods for the sorting of allies based on the lambda expression and based on the new way how collection framework is doing this. And its implementation is based on the parallel array framework written by the Doclia for the last summer <coughs> Google of Code. And lambda form expression of the methods handles. This is again very big change, which is removing the assembly code from the virtual machine itself and is forwarding it to the execution of the virtual machine. From networking, the most challenging change was the new HTTP client, but it was dropped in the middle of January. The current URL connection is, was done with the legacy protocols in mind, which are now legacy and we need to support the new ones. It's quite complicated to keep the URL connection updated. It, it should be, it, in past tense, it should be based on the new IO and keep an enterprise in mind, so this feature is missing in JDK really deeply. PLS, server naming extension, and network interfaces, aliases, events, and defaults. Currently, you have no possibility how to find that your device has more than one network device. So with this new API, you will be able to get all the devices in machine. You will be able to listen the changes of the devices and to choose your device you want to use. And also, you will be able to get the information when one of them will stop working, then you will automatically start to use the second one. Cryptography. Configure a secure random number. Uh, I think that the most of developers is not aware that the secure random is using the def random device in Linux, which is blocking. So sometimes you really need to have an army of Indian guys to make an entropy for you, or you can wait forever. So now you will be able to configure it in runtime on in Java security policy. And then the secure number will work just with def random, which is providing the good randomness without blocking. And if you need the full randomness, then you will always swap to the def random. Kerberos 5 extension, it's a little bit relic. It should be in JDK for a long time. And actually, it was proposed for JDK 7, but was not made in time. And a strong algorithms for password based encryption. From cryptography, the enchanting of the certificate revocation, revocation checking API. Now, when you are handling the certificates in JDK, you get just fail, pass or fail. Not enough. Now, you will be listened in each step. 
and you will be able to attach the callbacks, so you will be able to communicate with the API more closely. Overhauling of case stores, its, its goal is nice. We will be, the Java's own format of a case store will be removed and replaced by PTCC 12, which is standardized, and a lot of tools is using it. And a lot of new Cipher suites, each of them is a really big change, but I don't understand them. So, Project Jigsaw. Project Jigsaw was unluckily proposed to the JDK now 9 and its modularization of the Java platform itself and of the results of, of your work that we can create the modules. Its continuous integration into the JDK 7 and 8 is done via the Project Penrose, which was approved on the beginning of the last year. The current JDK is monolithic and huge. Everybody has installed all these packages and they are really large, much more than 100 megabytes. And if you do your build of your simple Hello World application wrongly, it can be big enough. The modules should replace the classical class path, but there will be some backward compatibility. And it's inspired by the Maven and by the Unix packages. The modularization of native parts of virtual machine, oh, oh sorry, of JDK, it's not sure even for GDK9, it's actually not sure forever. Uh, what is Jigsaw solving is something we know as a jar hell. Uh, a lot of transitive and not clear dependencies and dependencies of multiple versions. Actually, when your project is depending on two, two versions of the same library, it's quite complicated to solve this. Also, you can get a name clash in your application when two closed jars are, have been used. And you cannot manage your dependencies unless you wrote some your own class loader, and then you are somehow, somehow, ch uh, somehow checking this. But uh, we will pay a cost for it that the usage of private code will be no longer possible. The platform fragment, the fragmentation of platform itself will bring us a lot of benefits. It, in long term, it should allow the unification of standard edition and micro edition, and just build them from one project, project together. And also there were some noises about the merging with Enterprise Edition, but uh, licenses issues will probably never allow this. There will be no more runtime jar in JDK, and each, each module which will replacing the runtime jar will have its swing, will have one module, XML will have its own module, language itself, and so on. Startup performance, not just preloading, but also the pre-downloading. The preloading is done in JDK 6 already and it's working, but well, you cannot pre-download the part of the runtime jar. The integration with the native packaging system is something what Linux packagers are waiting, because to pack the jars with these dependencies is a mess. So it was inspired by it and it's providing the compatibility, so you will be able to generate the package itself from thanks to the project Jigsaw. And package granularity, of course, you will be able to split your modules, gather your modules together, which can maybe lead to the new modules hell, but a lot of work has been done to avoid this. What is the module? Uh, the definition of the module is the plain text Java file inside your module. It's looking something like that. The cables are pretty much self-explaining, and you can take your module, describe by this, and export it to the classical jar. Uh, to the new J-module or, as I told, to the native packages. And also it should be possible to do this, to export to the web archive or enterprise archive, but I'm not sure if they will be able to do it for JDK9. Project Jigsaw, you can build it easily as other open JDK projects, Mercurial clone, get sources, configure and make, so no magic here. As a result of the compilation, you will get not just JDK image, but JDK module image, which is containing the two new tools in the bin directory, jmodule and jpackage. And in lib modules, there will be no longer runtime jar, but uh, lots of modules, each of them for the specific package of JDK. And except the classes, there will be some more metadata. Let's check it more closely. First module, you can easily create the directory infrastructure, create a package, and create a simple class which is providing the computation of the factorial. And you are adding the module info Java declaration. In our case, very simple, that its module and its name factorial is in version one, and it's exporting the package fact. And compilation, 
you compare it with the output directory to the modules and where to find other modules and where to find the sources. The first dependent module, we will write the hello world module, which is just importing the factorial function and using it in its my method. The module info declaration will be a little bit more complicated because again we are specific. We are saying this is module, it's in version one, but it requires the module factorial in version one. And th that is saying that the mine class is in package hello and it's called mine. <laughs> the compilation is nearly the same. We are specifying the output directory, the module pass, which is important because here in the directory modules is already lying the factorial module. Source part with the sources and compilation. The run is then very simple. You just execute Java with the M, which means module you want to invoke. So module hello, and it will launching the hello mine method. But you can do much more with the, with the jigsaw and with the modules. You can create a repository, and then you can install the package to the repository, which is making some abstraction from you and the place where all the modules are lying. In repository, you will find all your modules in their versions. Hello, version, hello module in version one and factorial version in version one, metadata and classes. Then you can launch the hello module simply by specifying the repository. And modules can be, of course, used directly from the directory where the modules are, as I have already shown here. That where the, it's in a directory with the modules, then you don't need a specific repository or any more passes. More of the deploying and the running, uh, you can create your G module by the jpackage command, jpackage, where the, mod and where the modules are, and, and how, how the, sorry, there is a typo, never mind. <laughs> Just creating the jpackage, sorry. <laughs> or you can export it to the Nux package, again by the jpackage command, you can specify where the modules are, what's the name, and what should be the output, and the result is really the package as we are used from Fedora from the Debian. Or you can install the modules from the new jmod package, simply by executing the jmod, install to the repository, and what module you are going to export. Then again, you can launch it by the specifying the repository and the name of the module. It's a bit under the hood, it's mostly, it's mostly the explanation of the keywords because they are some hidden traps. Declaration of module, the keyword module. There is a name convention on the naming that the module should have the name of the package it is exporting. And the uh, specifying of the version is optional. And the name is classical Java qualified identifier as we are used for variables. Module can export some of its APIs. So when module is exporting the package, it's exporting all public types in four, but no private parts, never and it's not exporting the sub-packages. So if you want to export the more complicated application, then you need to export the all packages one by one. And again, no private members export ever. Requires, when your module is dependent on another module, then you are specifying it by the requires keyword. You can optionally add the version constraints. And important is that your module and the required module, they have always the different class loaders. This is the big change in JDK. And your module will not re-export the classes from the required module. But you can do it when you are requiring it public. Then your module will export also the APIs of the required module. Services have been written a lot in Project Jigsaw. Uh, you can provide the implementation of some service interface, and then you can require the service, the definition of the service. And in your code, you can then get from the service loader API all the implementation of your interface, which can then you somehow walk through and select your best cap capable of service. Permits and local dependencies. This is mostly for the huge projects that when permits, close, permits keyword is here, then the module for pa can be required only by the permitted module. And when you are requiring something locally, then this module have to permit the calling module. This is the only case when the modules will have shared class loaders, and it's used for multi-module packages when your application is actually the one, but it's 
but it's from several modules. And there is also optional dependence. When some module is requiring optional module, then it can be compiled without it, it can run without it, but your module has to be prepared to work without the optional module. Entry point in what already told, you can specify the mine method of your module and then it can be simply launched as we are used to work with jars. There is a hidden base module, which is all the, all the JDK, and if you not, are not specifying the exact version of the JDK you want to use, then the platform default is used. You can create also the aliases, which is actually the rena renaming of the module, and you can create a views. It's quite a good change. You can then create the views on your module. In this example, I am using it just for create a separate mine classes. So I can just then just run module cat, which will launch this method, or module ls, which can run this method. Here is the view to the modular JDK. Here are the tools. Here is the whole who JDK is not all the classes here, and the calling of the services via the Java base. The class loaders. As I already told, each module has its own class loader, and from this is also sure that there will never be the null class loader. For now, the JDK is loaded by the bootstrap class loader, and if you are asking for the class loader of the JDK base, then you got null. It will no longer be true. And also, each module will have its own class loader, except the multi-module packages. So you will have no possibility to access private classes of the other modules. Maybe there will be some hackish way how to do it, but it's not known now. But we hope that the reflection will be enriched to allow us this, because we are quite used to touch the private stuff of the packages. Some bytecode changes were necessary. The module info Java is really compiled to the module info class. So the new flag that this is Java module, this is Java info is here. Limitation to the version for JDK 9 and more. No implicit exports. All exports are expanded in the compile time, and also views are expanded. And dependencies, export and services are, are tables with the indexes to the constant pool as we are used from the classes. Conclusion of this summary, Oracle have fulfilled some of its promises, especially the community is taking care about, Lambda are going on, and most of the small features is going on. But the dropping of Jigsaw in October and dropping of some small parts in uh, January of 2013, well, it smells not so good, but at least it will be no revolution and just simple evolution. This is everything, some more reading for you. I thank you for your attention, and if you have some questions, feel free to ask. You have five minutes. No questions? <laughs> thank you. Sorry? Can you speak a little bit more why, why do you think they Why they were dropped? Yeah. Because they were not finished in the deadline. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's very simple. And then why they were not finished, I cannot say. I don't know. Yeah. Is this jigsaw really needed in this present it was like last year? Uh, if it is following the OSGI. Yeah. Oh. It, Yes, it is, but OSGI is much more, uh, much more sophisticated than just simple modules. So yes, it's implied it by it. It's trying to be compatible with it, but it have not all its life cycles. It's just one part of OSGI, actually. Hmm. Actually, it is yes, <laughs> because there is already Maven. There is OSGI yes, but. It's not solving the problem in Java itself, which have no entry points for OSGI or, or Maven. It is every single stuff around. And JDK ma has had to react somehow to it, this. So this modularization should, well, it's not, not goal is to implement the OSGI or to implement <coughs> the Maven, but to try to keep as close to them as possible and prepare the Java to follow this way correctly, which is not doing now the JARS RSR. <laughs> yes. How, how can Java know that? Yes, good question. I'm not sure how for Debian, I was not checking for this, but for RPMs, the guys in Fedora are working pretty hard to export the Maven and the Java stuff, 
and well, it, there is a zero compatibility right now. <laughs> Java is, the module is creating really its own spec file, it's here, but and it's following, it's expecting that there is a repository somewhere. Yes, so it's really, well, I would say it's useless for packaging purposes right now. And I hope the federal guys will react to this and will teach the Jigsaw guys how to do it correctly, or they will have really problems to adapt the Jigsaw. The compatibility is really wrong. It is RPM package, but not useful, not so useful. Okay, thank you. <laughs>